Welcome to the Rock Field tutorial. We'll look at a few different ways to create large numbers of randomly generated objects which are all different. This is what we want to end up with at the end of the tutorial. It's basically a field of rocks on a randomly generated ground plane and each of the rocks is also generated randomly and is unique. We also have colors assigned to each of the lights at the center of each rock and we'll see how that we can control that semi-randomly where we control the color but we select randomly which rock has the specific colors. This tutorial assumes that you have some familiarity with Houdini's interface and working practices. I would recommend that you take some introductory training before you do this tutorial if you have never used Houdini before. This tutorial can be done with any version of Houdini. You can use Houdini Apprentice, Apprentice HD, Houdini Escape, or Houdini Master to accomplish everything that's in this tutorial. And now I have a group called Group 1. So I'll rename Group 1 to be Scatter Points. Don't use a space. It won't like it if you use the space. And if I just drag down slightly in the interface here, you can see that it's put the numbers of the primitives, in other words, the numbers of the polygons, into a list. So if the number of the primitive is mentioned in the list here, then it's part of the group. Down on the scatter, if I select that under group, I can choose scatter points. And now it's only scattering points onto the primitives where, that I grouped. If I turn on the template for the group, I don't see the group selected there, but I can see where I drew that. And if I turn up the number of scattered points just temporarily to 10,000, you can really see where I selected the polygons and where the group has been scattered. Type S to select some geometry. Right click and make sure I'm selecting primitives or use the hotkey for. And then I'll just draw out some primitives there. And if I right click and go to spreadsheet now, it may still be in, in show points mode. These icons at the top here will let you see the different types of attributes. So on the output of our fractal, I'm going to right click and bring in a primitive SOP. And if I go to the attributes tab, I'll change keep color to add color. Nothing changes. I'll right click on the color, delete channels, nothing changes. But if I go in and dial a color in, I'm coloring each of my rocks. Again, I think you can probably see where this is going. We want to add a ramp and have the lookup of the ramp be based on the copy stamp. So very much like what we did before, on the primitive, we'll go to Edit Parameter Interface. We'll find the ramp color. I'll select the Do Color in the list here and click the arrow. And this will bring in the ramp color over here, and I'll call this Cull Ramp. If you don't, simply select the Cam 1 that we added earlier and click Render to force it to re-render. It will automatically add a Mantra IPR for you. And you should see the rocks render quite quickly and then progressively get more and more refined with the anti-aliasing. In Mantra, there is something of a penalty for using displacements, but the penalty is not as heavy as some other renderers. So if you can use true displacements, you'll find that, generally speaking, they'll look better than just a bump map. And I played with this, and I found that a value in RGB of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.41 gave me just a hint of kind of a sickly polluted yellow in the fog. There's also a brightness control. If you middle click on that you can brighten the entire scene up. This is not adjusting the render. This is only adjusting what's seen in the viewport. And you just click on the little icon next to it to reset it back to its default. On the far right is an adapt to full pixel range button. And what this will do is analyze the render 
and then adjust the controls to make sure everything fits between 0 and 1. So if I click on this, notice that it had to increase the brightness to make the brightest pixel hit 1. That means that I can probably go higher in my light intensity without it hitting a value of 1. Mantra always renders a high dynamic range image. You never have to worry about going above 1 as long as you save it to a file format like EXR or Houdini's PIC format that support floating point HDR images. It's not a big deal if you render something that's higher than 1. And part of the sphere is hidden by the displaced rock and part of it is exposed. So instead of having the entire rock glow, I have sections of the rock glowing. In my opinion, this is a lot more interesting visually. We can take a look at some of the other areas here. You can see that the rocks have glowing bits inside themselves that are casting light out of them. So I personally find this a more visually interesting result where instead of the entire rock glowing, it's almost like there's part of the rock that's exposed has a glow to it that's lighting up the environment around it. For those of you who got through it, there you go. You can see there's a few little sparkles in certain areas, so you might have to turn up the sampling slightly to get rid of those sparkles, but we have quite an interesting looking uh, field of unique rocks that glow. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, we welcome feedback on the tutorials, so please feel free to comment on them as well. Thanks for watching. Thank you.